you've probably heard a lot about the James Webb Space Telescope lately, and not just from me, but from anyone who is interested in space and astronomy. It is a huge deal. This telescope was first proposed back in 1996, and it took over 15 years and almost $10 billion to construct it. Many, many very smart and talented people have put their life's work into this project, and it represents a huge opportunity for scientific research. And many, many of you have asked me about that scientific research. Nora, you say, what is the JWST going to look at first? Well, let's talk about it. First, a brief overview of just how observing time is assigned on the JWST. So 10% of the total time is what's called director's discretionary time. Another 10% of the observing time is what's called guaranteed time. And this is time that's set aside for teams and scientists that helped develop the telescope. And about 80% of the time is just general observing or GO. Scientists basically write and submit these proposals arguing why they should be given general observing time on the JWST. And all of these proposals are reviewed by the Telescope Allocation Committee or the TAC. The time is then given to the scientists that can demonstrate that their observations have a good chance of having transformative implications for their own subfield and maybe other subfields and are very suitable for being observed by the JWST. The first year of Webb's observing time is called Cycle 1. So Cycle 1 GO proposals were due back in November of 2020, and the awards were announced in May of 2021. So we've known for a while now what the first year of JWST time is going to look like. And there are a lot of proposals that got awarded, and so I will leave the links below so you can peruse all the Cycle 1 GEO and GTO proposals. But that doesn't exactly answer the question of what JWST will be looking at first. For that, we turn to the director's discretionary time. In Cycle 1, this time includes the early release science programs. The ERS programs were selected years ago, and they are designed to utilize all of the instruments and capabilities of the telescope so that the community can have a better understanding of just how the telescope operates going forward. The ERS programs will take place in the first five months of JWST operations, and there are 14 ERS programs across six science areas. So for galaxies in the intergalactic medium, there'll be a program looking at the lensing cluster ABLE 2744, a program to look at four LURGs, or luminous infrared galaxies, a survey of 100 square arc minutes on the sky to hopefully discover and observe high redshift galaxies. For reference, the full moon is about 750 square arc minutes, and four gravitationally lensed galaxies between a redshift of about one and four. For massive black holes and their host galaxies, there will be a program to look at three luminous quasars and a nearby Seifert galaxy. For planets and planet formation, yay, they'll be looking at three known transiting exoplanets and three known directly imaged exoplanets and disks. In the solar system, they'll be looking at Jupiter's atmosphere and its satellite and ring system. For stellar physics, they'll be looking at the photodissociation region known as the Orion Bar in the Orion Nebula, the star-forming region Chameleon 1, and a wolf rayet binary. And for stellar populations, they'll be observing three different well-resolved stellar systems, a globular cluster, a faint galaxy, and a star-forming dwarf galaxy. But which of these will actually be literally first? Well, we actually don't know. So the actual details of the observations are coordinated by the Space Telescope Science Institute, and they will have different optimization techniques that would depend on things like what's actually going to be in Webb's field of view when science operations start, and how far apart are certain targets, so what's going to be optimized for the best use of observing time. Also, before the actual science observations can begin, the telescope needs to be calibrated, and that will involve looking at a lot of different targets. I'll leave a link down below so you can look at the list if you're interested. And so technically, all of those will be observed before these ERS programs even begin. So this is a bit of a long answer, but hopefully now you understand the JWST will be looking at a lot of really exciting science targets, including the early science programs, which will help the scientific community optimize future use and planning for the telescope. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just dying to see those first images and what exactly they're going to be. Thanks for joining me. I will see you again next time. Bye.